faithful and true. wish all those who have their birthday this month you can call out their names and let us wish them a happy birthday all right we are wishing all our people happy birthdays miss rosie miss roslyn on august 1st and we have josiah of mary on the 7th we have uh, Liliana, ma who belongs to me, on the 18th. And Mr. Uzo of London, the Night Star, is on the 20th. We have Jeffrey of Lizzie. And we have my beloved mother, Lillian, on the 31st, a uh, reassignment. And we have more partners out there who we, who, um, we want to wish you Happy birthday this month. And we lift you up to the Lord, your name. Everyone say happy birthday. 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 Your life happy matters. Happy birthday to all of you. Prosper. Prosper. Yeah, prosper. <laughs> Yeah. Happiness. Peace. Joy. Joy. The, the reading the reading. The reading for the service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter fourteen. 13 to 21. When Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. When it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, this is a deserted place, and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away, that they may go into the village and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, We have here only five loaves and two fish. He said, Bring them here to me. Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and two fish. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples. And the disciples gave to the multitudes. So they all ate and were filled. And they took the twelve baskets full of fragments that remained. Now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men, besides 
women, and children. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to start this um, creating and ministering by saying this to you. If you find yourself constantly tired, If you find yourself constantly weak, not just because it is summertime, but it has been going on for a long time, go to the hospital and let them check your blood pressure. If you constantly have headache, either minor, major, or migraine. It comes and go, and comes and go. Just go to, go to the hospital. Do not be afraid, because there are many of you who are afraid of hospitals. You are afraid of clinics. Go and let them check your blood pressure. One tiny little thing may result in your death, untimely death. I have lost so many bishops and archbishops eminences, the princes of the church. I've lost so many of them to high blood pressure. Diabetic, many of them never knew that they were diabetic. Many of them never knew they had high blood pressure. Many of them never knew that their heart has problems. And they just collapsed and just died. Those are the three things that you watch out for. High blood pressure, diabetic, and heart issues. Cardiocoronary difficulties. And you may not know it. Because these are things that doesn't come with pain. You don't feel no pain. So these are secret killers. I have known, yeah, I have known of people who go to their job, eight o'clock in the morning, they're in their offices. I'm talking of people who are wealthy and have money, and they didn't pay attention to their health. And while they are on their computer, they just slump their head on their on the on the on the office table. And the people just thought that they are just resting and they were dead. When you hear of a lot of pastors finished preaching, went into their office, and then just put their head on the office table, office desk, and people thought they were just resting and they were dead. Others just slumped while they were preaching or teaching, they just slumped and they died instantly. Love yourself enough. This is how I know that you really love yourself. Is that things you used to do that are not profitable, you let them go. You pay attention to the most important things of your life and that is it. And whoever doesn't like it, to hell with them. That's none of your business. 
you need your life. You must love yourself enough as to if the doctor prescribed those tiny little medicine for high blood pressure, you take them religiously every day. Since I was the age of 14, I don't I don't put salt in my food. Neither do I add sugar to my tea. Or sometimes when I drink coffee, just, I mean, coffee is not my thing. I do not drink hard liquor. You have to know what your body does not like. So many a times you heard, this person died, they said the Lord took him, or the Lord took her. Who told you that the Lord needed them at that time? Carelessness is the original sin. When I study the teachings of the church, the high classic teachings of the church, and they talks about that envy is the original sin that the devil envied God. Okay, that's true. But then look at the origin of every envy and jealousy and hatred. Carelessness. Why will someone who is a, a creature go to challenge a creator? That's carelessness. You didn't you don't even think about it. You don't care. When I see people who say, I don't care, I just leave them alone. Because I care. I care about my life. If money is what you think, is the reason why you are with us or you are connected with me or connected with our mission well i can tell you this i would rather be loved i would rather want people who follow us not because of what they can get out of us but because of what they can apply to their lives to make their life better Carelessness is a very bad thing. I have learned that even if you have the power to heal the crowd, to heal multitude of people, you must have a doctor. You must have your own personal physician. It doesn't matter the kind of power you carry. You must have a personal physician. You must have a personal attorney, personal lawyer. You must have a personal banker. You must have a personal tax person. These are the rules of life. Somebody, somebody gave me, somebody gave me 33,000 US dollars. You think I went shopping with it? I went to an auction and bought and bought a property with it with thirty thousand. For some of you, it doesn't mean anything. You'll go shopping, you'll go vacation. You start giving money to families and friends, doing things for them to see that you have arrived. But I used thirty thousand three zero, and went to an auction, and bought a two bedroom house. two bedroom and one bath with a shower. I use like 8,000 and repay it. Fix the broken walls. 
did the electric electrical things. Pull out the bathroom, the toilet cover, put a nice one for cheap. And I turned around after a year and sold it. Three times what I bought it. That's exactly the money that I will have. For some people, they will, they will say, okay, they will put it in their saving or in their checking and keep spending it until it's gone. Because what a lot of time, what people ask me for money for is just trash. The kind of money I'm looking for is not money to buy a car. It's not money to buy a jet, even though I need one. It's not money for me to go and buy a new shoe. I have enough shoe to last me a lifetime. I have enough clothes to last me a lifetime. I'm not looking for food. I'm not looking for a vacation. I need money to buy assets. That's all. I need money to buy companies. Not just to start, but to buy companies. That's all I need. So if somebody loves me enough, give me money to buy assets. Don't give me food. Don't send me food. The only person who knows the kind of food I eat, food that I can pick, that are organic and healing, is Elizabeth. She's authorized to do that. Because she's gifted in making sure that I stay alive. She knows what kind of oysters that I need, what kind of sardines and tuna and salmon and all of those things. She knows it. That's a specialty. Nuts. She read everything to make sure that I don't die before my time by eating these things. So if you love me enough, go and, go and get a job and send me money to buy assets. Then I will share the profit with you. I have seen I have seen major apartment complexes. Some of them are fifty six bedroom, fifty six bathroom. I need money to go and purchase them. So if you love me enough, pray and ask the Lord, the God of the harvest, to send me people to send me money, to bless people out there, to give people money out there, so that they can send me the money for me to go. To fly out, go and buy those things. That's what I want to do with money. And let me tell you, God will never trust you with money. God will never release treasures of heaven and earth, the fatness of the earth to you, until you begin to think the way I'm thinking. Until you begin to desperately want to possess assets. Because only those who have assets are going to run rule and lead the people of this earth and that is it looking for healing and food is one thing but if you want to draw the attention of God it's not looking asking God to give you a house to live in because the house you buy to live in is a liability Money is going out on mortgage. Money is going out on payment for utilities. Money is going out on maintenance of that house. That's a liability. Your car is a liability. Your jet and yacht is a liability while you are paying on them. And what makes you a human being is when you have cash flow. 
something that is bringing income that people can see that is where your money is coming from so owning a house is not a is not bliss unless you did it the way i did our own pay it off so that there's no mortgage some of you are looking for our our broadcast online we are making a complete total decision on what we are doing with professionals for example like the discussion that Victoria and Vivian were leading all these that have been traveling don't think you'll see them online they are online but you won't see them they are for sale because they are too good it's not things that you just throw out there to people to listen and, and say next no we are making decisions on a lot of things we take time to know we, what are we going to put for the public and what is it that the public going to buy most of what I've done over the years I have been contacted by major hospitals and universities I'll be going to teach in major hospitals and to teach doctors and major universities to teach professors some of the things I've been teaching you now they have come across it major universities and hospitals have come across what I've been teaching uh, uh, all this time now science has catch up with what I've been teaching that is true just as I'm gonna start a major teaching on where is a human soul where is the mind and I've read all the books in the world and everybody's arguing over where the soul is where the mind is where this is that well I said to myself let me go to the Holy Spirit let him tell me where is the human what what does a human soul comprise of where is the human mind how does something that is perishable transient how does it feed in how does it click with something that is imperishable and i hope samantha you are very interested in this because you and i are very much interested in neuroscience yes bishop thank you very much and suddenly the holy spirit began to teach me while you are alive your your brain is a masterpiece that's why you must have a good brain many of you don't even know how to how to make your brain the best you don't even know <laughs> what do you eat to have a good brain what do you drink to have a good brain how do you sleep to have a good brain you don't know how is the brain connected with your mind yeah. Is your brain your mind? No. No. Because when you leave your body, due to when you become very elderly, the brain becomes fertilizer. It goes back to the soil. It goes back to sand. It goes back to continue where it came from. Our body comes from the earth. It's part of the earth thing. We are we are land people, earth people, soil people, clay people. But that is not who we really are. 
we are generated from a different planet to make our home here for a while even though it was for us to make our home here forever things did happen so why is it that when you leave your physical body everything you've done on the earth you carry it with you it doesn't die with the body huh I say I got it so the mind is part of the invisible structure of the invisible visible you the real you is a spirit being the real you is a spirit being and that is where your mind is until your spirit is turned on your body is useless Your lifeless body cannot think. Why? Because they're thinking you. They are alive you. L-A-L-I-V-E. That which is of you that is really alive. That animate, which means make alive. Your physical body is not there. That's what, that, that's what Tom said. You see, your physical body must be in sync with your spirit that's what has happened they click bam and that's it and they start working together so you are greater than you think you are mightier than you think you are more powerful than you think and richer than you think that's why people with low self-esteem I have no respect for them. A man was standing with a, a lady in a supermarket and the man was shopping for that, uh, for that lady and her children and for the family of that lady. Two other men were passing by and they and they knew the lady and they and they say hi and they call her by name hi linda she behaved like she didn't hear them <laughs> so the new man in her life said linda they, these two men are they are saying hi do you know them she said no 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 i don't know them uh -uh. one of them called marcus and one of them called Mali. He said, Linda, you say you don't know me. And this other guy said, Linda, do you say you don't know me? <laughs> and they look at the man, the new man, and they said, you will be like us. She asked, she, yeah, you will be like us. You see this girl? She's, you see this lady? Since she want to lie and, and blackmail us and betray us, before it total strange instead of saying hi, hi. Mali. Mali's friend used to sleep with Linda. And Mali's friend gave Linda to another guy. And another guy passed Linda to Mali. And Mali passed Linda to me, Marcus. And now you are the next person. And the man, and the new man stood there and said, this is his very word. You can love a man all you want. Or if it is vice versa, you can love a woman all you want. But when the person discover that you are a cheater, you are never satisfied financially. Because one thing I've discovered is that the spirit of, I don't even call it cheating, the spirit of a prostitute, the spirit of a whore, a whore, or whatever we call them, whether a man or a woman, the spirit of unsatisfied carelessness, the spirit of 
always enthusiastic and passionate to go and sleep with a new person. The spirit of always wanting to go back to sleep with your ex, whether your ex-husband or ex-wife or baby mom or baby daddy, that spirit will never. The spirit of always wanting to get out of the house and go and do something with somebody that will always result in food, fun, and sex. That spirit will never allow you to progress. No matter how hard you work in life, it will never allow you. Because while you are sleeping, that spirit will wake you up. And at that point, your baby daddy will call you and say, I want you to bring the child to come and see me tomorrow. And you already know what is going to happen. And you just go. Or you yourself call and say, oh, I'm coming to see you. Or it is your baby mama that is calling. Or your ex. That's why a lot of people are single in the world. Not because they are supposed to be single. It's because of this kind of carelessness and nature. And when the devil sees that this is what you enjoy, a demon will be sent to you to enforce it so that it becomes an addiction. Something that you cannot hold back. And you begin to love it. You begin to think that getting money from different women, getting money from different men, that that is madness. But you do not know that it is a curse. You, you have to protect your soul. That's why we pray a lot. We fast a lot. And we have no result from God because we have not yet dealt with certain carelessness. And that's what God is waiting for. Deal with one carelessness and then money will be released to you. Material resources will come to you that you will never lose. In today's lesson, something mighty exploded in that reading. Something big exploded. When Victoria and I we were practicing the, the reading this morning, immediately she started to read. There was something imploded inside me. And outside me, it busted out everywhere. Many people believe. Many people have been brainwashed, indoctrinated, to think that the Bible is simply a spiritual book. Let me tell you the way I react to religious articles, religious publications, and holy or sacred scriptures of religions. I don't care about them. Unless they are a manual for business on the earth. Because I realized that apart from God telling Abraham to be circumcised and to circumcise Ishmael and Isaac, there is nothing spiritual. There was nothing spiritual about the relationship between Abraham and Yahweh. Nothing. The same thing you find in the life of Isaac. The same thing you find in the life of Jacob. The same thing you find in the life of, uh, of Joseph. Even when dreams came. 
even when visions came, they will all get towards earthly things. All of them were about their earthly life. Every dream, every vision, every visitation of God or angels to these people in the Bible was for one thing, earth. It wasn't for heaven. And when I saw it, I grieved. I grieved for religious people. Because they've been brainwashed. I realized that the relationship between God and humans, every law and commandment God gave to Moses or to anybody is always about how they are to make money, how they are to get land, how they are to war to remove the enemies and take over land, how, how they are to, to build cities, how they are to have children and raise children here on earth. I didn't see anything about heaven. Nothing. And I was so shocked when I saw it. And 99% of every time we go to religious places, they will never teach you that the sacred scripture, the Bible, the Bible in your hand, sacred scriptures, is a manual for top class business people. The rich and the wealthy, that's their book. The poor and the middle class, that's not your book. Go and read Shakespeare. Go and read, go and watch movies. Go and watch Hollywood movies. Go and eat at McDonald's until you become mortal, mortally obese and McDonald's will kill you. Or Pai Pai. Go. Go and read those things. Go to those places. The Bible is not for you. Look at the dream of Joseph. The dream of Joseph was to lead him, was telling him that he's going to be a governor, a mighty ruler or leader. On the earth, not in heaven. And he became. And until God began to see that that is how you see his son Jesus, what he came to do for you. Why the Holy Spirit was sent for you. God will never trust you with anything. He will never answer your prayer. You'll be, you'll be a zombie on the earth and in the church and on YouTube till the day you leave the earth. Because you never wanted anything on the earth. God will allow you to do worship. Praise and worship. It will be like walking in the desert, in the wilderness for 40 years. Until you, all, you just perish. That's how it is. If you read the book of Esther. You don't even hear anything about God in the book of Esther. And yet God is there. You don't hear much about God in the book of Ruth, yet God is there. In the reading of today about the multiplication of two fishes and five loaves of bread, something stand out very clearly. What do you have? What is in your hand? What do you currently possess that you can give to Jesus while you fast and pray or meditate on the word? What do you have that you can say, Holy Spirit, this is what I think I possess. If I'm wrong, correct me. A wise person is someone who comes in prayer and says, God, I don't know what my professional gift is. I've gone to college. I graduated. I have my master and my PhD. I finished high school. If that's all the degree you have is high school or elementary. You don't like school. It does not mean that you're a blockhead. It simply means there are other things you are good at doing. What is it that I'm good at doing? Not just what I love. 
or what comes to me easy. But what is it that I can endure and do one thing and finish a task? And when I look at what I've done, I love it. What is it? That's the reason for prayer. The reason for prayer is for what? Worship and discovery. Worship and discovery. That's the reason for prayer. It's the same reason for meditation. In fact, meditation itself is, fasting and meditation is for power. The presence of God is for worship, discovery. You go to discover what you don't know about yourself. Joseph didn't know how his future would be like. God gave it. God showed him. Jacob did not know much about himself. God showed him. Abraham, Moses, all these people, they didn't know much about themselves. God showed them. He turned the mirror on for them to see. And they operated on the earth. Because what God is after is not giving you a name and fame and prosperity in heaven. What God is after is you are properly representing him on the earth. Through being born again, whereby the connection is done. That's the first thing. Fail with the Holy Ghost. That's it. After that, every other thing is about how you can properly represent your kingdom, the kingdom of God on the earth. And that is done through job, but especially through acquiring assets that is making money. Because when you have assets, you have money. You can borrow from it. You have power on the earth. Is when you are connected with what I'm talking about. You can rule on the earth. You can move with the strong and the mighty and make decisions for this planet and its people. There is nothing for us to give to the people to eat. There is nothing here. This is a wilderness. Who tells you? One of the reasons why I love women a lot is that a man will walk into a pantry or open the refrigerator or walk into a house. He didn't see no food. He look into the refrigerators. There are a few things there. Look into the pantry. There are a few things there. There's no food here to eat. And the man was not quarreling with his wife or girlfriend or mistress or whatever. Why, why don't you prepare something for me? Eh? There's no food in this house. Why didn't you go shopping? Even though he has not given her no money. He's not quarreling. That's why when I hear men writing, it's always men who write, think like a man. They, they want a woman to think like a man. Are you serious? <laughs> it should be the other way around. Every man should think like a woman. I am a man, but I think like a woman. And that is the gift that the Holy Spirit gave me. You are a man, but you must think like a woman. Be a man, act like a man, but think like a woman. So I'm going to write a book and reverse it. And many of you women do not know what God said about you before the year 2000. You don't know. That's why I'm asking the Holy Spirit to help me organize after 23 years of being in the new millennium, I have not yet been able to organize a worldwide conference for women to tell women what God said about them. 
but I have been bringing it in popcorn, pop, 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 pop here and there. Many of you women think that without a man, you won't suck, survive in life. That's a lie from hell. I need women who can stand up to be women. I need women who can stand up to be ladies. I need ladies who can stand up to be queens so that they can make me some princes and prince. Because God and I, we depend on the women. Not that we don't depend on the men, but my primary, the primary reason I'm sent on earth to be a seer is to raise mighty men, strong men, mighty women, strong women. But the millennium in which mm -hmm. I live is the millennium that belongs to a particular agenda. That is why I give the women gender 70% of what I'm doing. And the men is 30, 30. Why? Because I understand prophecy. Not prophecy that somebody prophesied to me. I understand the mind of God. That's what I mean by prophecy. Thank you. A lot of men are broke because they are they are operating under the 20th century. The, the last, not this millennium. They are operating in the millennium of Adam and e, uh, Adam through to 20th century. We are now in 21st century, and 21st century does not belong to men. That I know for sure. Why? Because I am allowed entry to the kingdom of heaven to know they whisper their agenda to me, what they want to do and what they are doing. That's why any country that doesn't allow women to share 50-50 in government, in governing, in rulership, in leadership, that country will be zero at the end of the day. Mark my word, that's how it is. Why? Because they are operating against the agenda of God for the millennium. Any family that does not allow a woman to lead, if you don't want her to rule, let her lead. I am looking for dominant women. And people do not know why I love dominant women. It's because I understand, I understand God's mind. For a particular, I don't deal with generation. I deal with millennium. I deal with thousands of years. I deal with block, bulk. I don't deal with 10, 10 years. No, that's not how God operates. Seven years, these are lost. The seven years of farming, seven years of... These are already natural laws. But when it comes to the prophecy of God, don't allow human beings to be giving you prophecy. Don't go there. Because you'll be dealing with human soul, the human psyche. You'll be dealing with human mindset. The human spirit is operating. I peel it to get to, to, get to the real thing. People who prophesy... Prophesy for the nation, prophesy, thank God they don't prophesy to the planet. They prophesy to a generation. They prophesy to a class. They prophesy to a group. They prophesy to people who are already in hatred, careless, angry. Those are the people they prophesy to. They prophesy against government. When they are against one government or the other, prophecies begin to come out from their mouth. Men already have what it takes to build nations and continents. What do men have? Their women, their mothers, their sisters. 
they are queens, they are princes. Those are the people. So we men have, we men have. You ask God for something, he gives you a person. Men want to be in charge. Men want to exercise dominion. The being in charge and the dominion men are looking for, the wealth that men are looking for, is the women that they see and they don't even know it. And they are out there doing webinars, seminars, conferences, doing this, doing that. And yet, the prosperity they are praying for is the women that they are not allowing these women to exercise their gift, to manifest their gift. He said, if a woman wants to use a gift, it must go through a man. A man must vet it, approve it. I'm not talking of women who are careless and arrogant. That's not what we are talking about here. Or people who are dealing with gender conflict. That's not what we are talking about here. We are talking about the mind of God as pertaining to our millennium. Yeah. Every human being is going to fit into a thousand years plan of God. Every human being. And that is where I fit in. My real life began in the year 2000. That's when my real life started. So everything I've done before 2000 is like nothing. Because that's not my millennium. I don't belong to that millennium. And I, and I come to understand why there was so much conflict. Because that's not where I belong. I was waiting for the 21st century. I always ask myself, why was I raised by elderly women? And I now realize that the elderly women were preparing me for their millennium, the millennium of the women. See, everything is not coincident and accident. Ask yourself, who raised you? Which gender raised you? Then you will know what you are dealing with. I mean, it was revealed to me everything that I've done before the year 2000 is counted as zero. Why? Because I was born to wait for the year 2000 to come. Because that is where I began. I said, wow. Are you serious? And that is when everything began to happen to me for good was the year 2000. Everything. Every other conflict that has arisen after the year 2000 was for me to prepare me to fit in for the, for the millennium. After that, I've had no more conflict. It just died. Everything began to fall into place. Miracles began to happen that are beyond me. Prosperity began to happen. So you have to know where you belong. Whether you belong to the classic period, ancient period, medieval period, renaissance period, there are people whom that is where they belong. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> What do you have? For me, I have the I have the ladies. I have the women. Why? Because those are the primary people, the primary gender, who have been given the power, the passion, and the energy for the millennium. So if I'm going to have power, passion, energy, I have to I have to go with the women. Because where they are, that's where the energy is. That's where the power is. That's where the passion is. That's where the money is. Go to, go to, go to religious places and see how many men are there. The men are in the, in the rum bar drinking. The women are in the church praying to God for their husband. And for their children. 
any religious place you go today, 90% of those in that place are women. Go and, go and take a look. You will see. Go to the bank. Go to your local bank and see. 70% of workers there are women. 30 are men. Everywhere you go, including your, your, your local Walmart, Best Buy, Target, your local McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken, go and see who worked there. That will tell you where we are heading. So that's the first thing that people on the edge should know. What do you have that you can give God to bless? You can give Jesus to bless and to multiply the women with their gifts. Like I was saying, a man can walk into a house, open the refrigerator, open the cupboard, the pantry. There is nothing here to eat. And start quarreling with the woman. The same woman will, will get up from the couch where she was reading a book or responding to an email or a text message, that same woman will walk into that same pantry, to that same refrigerator, and in 10 minutes, she's bringing food to the same idiot that was wagging his stupid mouth like a pig <laughs> on that woman. The complainer, that same man that was complaining that there's no food in this house, Our lady will walk into that same refrigerator, that same pantry where you think there is nothing, and her brain is a savvy brain. Men do not know why God doesn't allow us to be pregnant and why God does not allow us to raise children. Why? Why 80% of raising a kid lies with the mother? Men don't know this. Is because of the savvy nature that God has put in them for survival. Without women, no man will be here. I'm just being plain with you. Give it five to ten minutes. That woman will go to that empty pantry, to that empty refrigerator, and put together some nice, delicious, nutritional food and put in front of him. And the bastard will not even be ashamed. Because bastards have no shame. He will, he will start eating. He will start eating. Oh, where was this food all this time? The food was there. Don't always think that without a man, you are lost. You can have money. And another thing is, don't use men for money. Do not do it. It's not a good thing before the sight of the Lord. Don't use men for money. Don't use them for entertainment. Don't use them for sex. Because it will come back to haunt you. Next thing that you have to give God to bless. Give him your children now for him to for him to bless. Thank God for them and give your children to Jesus. And you will see the difference. We are not talking of your children becoming religious, becoming Christians, becoming this. I've seen children who will not walk into the church of their fathers and mothers because that's not their place of primary interest. But they did well in their career. They will tell the parent, I'm a Christian by heart, but I don't want to go where all those people are. I'm not going there. I don't want to get involved. Every month I'll give you a tithe for you to give on my behalf, but I'm not going there. 
Don't think until your children follow you to your shrine. Then they are good children. Until they follow you to your church. They are children who will never go to any religious place. And yet, many of them are better than those who go. Hand over your children and let Jesus touch them, bless them. And I'm going to tell you why you must hand over certain things to Jesus. Here is food. Jesus said, bring it to me. That's all you guys got? Yep. Five loaves of bread and two fishes. Yep. Bring it to me. Hallelujah. And he thanked the Father for the fatness of the earth. For what they have right there. And then bim bam boom the miracle exploded in front of them. Why? When love shows up, when caring and kindness show up, good motives, right intention, meet or jam kindness and caring, miracles will explode. It will not be a small one quantity and in quality the fish multiplied the bread multiplied so that 5,000 men ate we are not counting women and children which means <laughs> seven times more than that and they had 12 baskets of what was eaten just half they took God is not asking you to give him what you don't have. Many of you go into debt because you want to give your family members, you want to give your children what you, what you don't have. Let your children know that this is the most important thing. And that's it. And then let them save their money. People become poor because they constantly buy it out a lot. They constantly change their cars a lot. They constantly move from one property to another a lot. They move from state to state. People are poor because they move from job to jobs. People are poor because they have children for too many people. Give Jesus what you currently have. The reason why you must do it is so that you don't become a disgrace on the earth. Let me make it very clear to you. If you give Jesus who you are currently, and you are honest with him about what your primary weaknesses are. There are people who do not want to tell God and also their accountability partner that they have a gambling problem. They have addiction to smoking, to tobacco product, and vaping. They have addiction to sex. They have addiction to spending money, shopping. They have addiction to wanting to always eat out. When you make yourself and your children think that the food outside is always better than the food you cook, then there's a problem. Watch those who are wealthy. The very rich, the very wealthy, they have somebody coming to cook for them. That's the way they do it. 
You don't always see them eat out. It's rarely you see them. Very rarely. And if you see them eat out, they are eating out only on our business. Their business is going to pay for that food. That's how the wealthy and the rich keep their money. Somebody come to cook for them. Cook the food they will eat for the next two weeks. Somebody come to cook it in two days and put them in, in the right places in their freezer or their fridge. And they pick from there, microwave it, or they warm it in the stove and eat. But if you are always thrilled by going out to eat all the time, you are not going to be rich. If you want to give your children the best video game that comes out, the best clothes that comes out, the best this that comes out, you are not going to be rich. One of the things I value about European lifestyle, I have been to a lot of European people's homes. One of the things I found out is that they don't have many shoes, they don't have many clothes. They, they have the basic. They don't have a lot of things in their homes. The skeletal. There's so, many, so, so much space in their homes. But go and look at the middle class and the poor. You won't find any way to pass in their homes. Because everywhere is cluttered and crowded with stuff that they are not even using. Because they think that clutter is riches. That's what they think. What gift do you have? Have you given your bank account to Jesus? Because what Jesus was simply doing is this. There is already the law of God on the earth. Be blessed. Be fruitful. Multiply. That's the law. When I wake up in the morning, that's the first thing I say to myself. Sometime in the afternoon, I repeat it. The guy Mary, be blessed, be fruitful, multiply, have dominion, rule and lead. That's the meaning of have dominion. Be successful, have money, build wealth, subdue and replenish. I say it to myself three times every day. Because that's the law of God for me. That's where I operate from. God who multiply what I have. God who have spoken multiplication into what I'm doing. Cause the spirit of multiplication. Let your Holy Spirit come upon this fish and bread. And let it multiply so that these people can eat and not die. And boom, it happens. I believe in boom. B-O-O-M. Explosion. Instant. Automatic. Boom. Why? Boom means prayer answered. Miracles is on. It's automatic. Why? Because that is how my father who art in heaven operates. Because there is a need for that thing. If the people leave that spot, they will mock Jesus. They will say bad thing about Jesus. He kept us here, listening to his trash, talking and talking and talking and praying. Even though he healed them, they won't remember. They will not remember the healing he did for them. All they're remembering is the hunger that is Mammering them, peppering them. Their tummies are rumbling. Brr, 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 brr. That's what they are listening to. They will not remember that you have just healed them. No. It is the immediate satisfaction that they want. 
and they will go and start talking trash on Jesus. Look at him. He kept us here for so many days. And we were here listening to his trash. He couldn't even... The guy is so poor, he doesn't even have money to feed us. Many of us have died on the way. What kind of crusade and, and, and gospel is that? Stupid. I'll never go to him again. I don't believe him. That guy is so stupid. And yeah. Jesus, yeah. Can you believe that? We have been with this guy all this time. And he doesn't even have money to feed us. And though they are entitled to his money. And to his food. Common food, Common food he doesn't have. Common food he does not have. And he's coming to tell us about heaven. Are you serious? Who would listen to that crap? The guy is fufu. The guy is fufu. He's, yeah. He is Bobo. Bobo the clown. That's who he is. Uh-huh. And they will go out and start doing those things. Saying those things. And so Jesus knows the way they think. He said, no, 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 no. Don't, don't dismiss them. Don't dismiss them because I know what these people, every good thing I've taught them, every miracle I've performed for them, they will not appreciate it. Food first. That's why the two most important things on earth is food and water. They go together. Food and water and medicine. That's it. They are the two most important things on the earth. Food and water and medicine. Don't play with those two things. And Jesus asked them, you yourself give them something to eat. They say, all we have found here is just two fishes and five loaves of bread. They say, bring it. Let God bless what you have currently. Now is more important than in any time. Now, bring me what you have currently, and I will multiply it currently. What is it you have now? Bring it. Let me bless it. The, the money you have, you think is little money. That's why it's little. Because you think it's little. Look, the Bible is full of this kind of scenarios. And that is why I'm brave and powerful and rich. is because I understand these laws. And that's why I'm going to be richer. And I want you to become richer and richer too. Look. Amen. Amen. One woman was married to a foolish prophet. That followed Elijah. A lot of prophets were raised by Elijah and they died poor. While Elijah was very rich. Elijah was very wealthy. And yet, the school of prophets he organized. And these people were married men. Majority of them. But many of them died poor. They didn't have no money. They prayed until they died. They fasted until they died. They never saw any miracle. Elijah alone had it. And they didn't. And I don't like that kind of thing. I don't like one person to prosper and to have power and the rest, whether it be political or whether it be whatever, and the rest do not have it. I don't like that. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of prophets that were raised by Elijah or followed Elijah they died poor. And a woman ran after the prophet Elisha and said, my husband was a prophet following your master Elijah. That's the meaning of that sentence. He was one of the prophets. He died. So while he was doing his prophetic business, he was borrowing money to live. Can you believe that? You followed the God who owned the heavens and the earth and you were broke. And you were doing church work. Shame on you. You are following Jesus. 
King of kings and Lord of lords according to the earth. Our God, our Redeemer. According to heavens and the earth. Son of God according to heavens and the earth. And you are poor, broke, cheap and can easily be outwitted and manipulated. Shame on you. And this man was a prophet following Elijah and he was borrowing money to eat to put a roof over his head and his wife and children. He was borrowing money. Liability. Following God should never be a liability. Any day that I discover that following God is a liability, I will leave God. I don't need that kind of a God. Following God should be an asset, not a liability. That's why God said, bring your gift and talent. That's what Jesus is asking you this morning. Bring it and let me bless it. Bring the little or the big money you have in your bank account and let me bless it. Bring your children, let me bless it. And he's telling us men, bring your mothers, bring your sisters. Bring your grandmothers and let me bless them for you. And we don't want to listen. Elisha was very, very touched. He said, really? Your husband was one of the prophets, say, yep. Yeah. And he was owing money, say, yep. Yeah. Hmm. And the woman said, the people that he owed the most money, owe, I'm not even talking about the small, small ones. They now want to come and capture my children and go and auction them off as slaves or use them for hard labor. My children now are going to become boy boy. You know what we call boy boy? Yeah, my children now are going to become boy boy. Are you serious? That's cruel, cruel English. African yeah. patwa. Say, my two children are now going to become boy boy. Two children of a prophet are going to become house help with hard labor. Yeah. Are you serious? They might even sell them to whoever. Why, 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 why should I be happy? A lot of you women are living with men who do not want to get out there and become somebody. And you are busy what do, being an enabler to them. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. God is going to hold you responsible and that is why God is not blessing you. He's allowing you to do your own thing. Because you are an enabler. To men who do not want to stand up and go and do the right thing legally for their lives. So as to support their children. So as to properly help you without you going to bed with them. You slept enough with them and they gave you children. Is that not enough? Is your name supplier? Elisha said to the woman, what do you have? What do you have? You see, the same principle. What do you have that I can bless? That I can, the word there is, I can make, I can generate fruitfulness into it and I can apply multiplication because of the blessing on it. The woman said, I have a little bit of oil in the house. Is that all you have? Yes, my Lord. All I have is oil to cook food for my children. Okay. Go and borrow bang, bang, bang. Bang, 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 bang. Go and borrow whatever you can use as container. Whether drums or whether you are going to go and find a, 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 a shipping, a, a, a ship that carries oil, go and bring Whatever that can contain oil, doesn't matter how big or small, go and bring it. Take it inside your room, close the door, and start pouring that oil. The woman did not say, hey, I don't understand this kind of science. So I don't know. Uh, uh, <laughs> prophet, prophet, El Elisha, please wait, wait. Did you smoke kanja today? Did you smoke marijuana? Huh? <laughs> did you smoke marijuana? 
or are you a neuropsychiatric uh, case? Are you dealing with some trauma that you cannot coordinate between the sky realm and how things are done on the earth? Elisha, is that where you are? Please, I don't want to do any... I, I don't... You see, my husband did these things. It didn't work. He was in debt. And now you are coming to tell me about this. The woman did not say that. The woman simply said, yes, sir. Thank you, prophet of God. Thank you, man from God. Not man of God. Thank you, man from God. Thank you, son. Yes, sir. Because we are the sons of the women. And she went and started burrowing. Basin, dishes, barrels. She burrowed, burrowed, burrowed. And they, and they took it. Could you imagine how people were looking at her when she was wheeling those things inside her, inside her house? And then she locked the door and started pouring. And she's like, what on earth is going on? She started pouring, and the thing kept flowing, and the thing kept flowing. This is a real miracle. This miracle did happen. I'm telling you, I swear before the Lord, it happened. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not a story. It happened. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. The story Amen. Of, the, of the multiplication of the fish and the loaf really happened. It happened. Amen. Somebody Amen. said, Amen. One, one theologian said that Jesus and the disciples went and baked Ma Mary's farfadbread.com. They went and baked some big, big bread and they hide them behind the tree. And when the people were hungry, they now offloaded them. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> that woman kept pouring keep pouring keep pouring until every jar was filled every drum was filled every ship was filled to go and sell in the water and when when she had nothing more the oil stopped coming out and she went and told Elisha and Elijah said, go and sell it. Go and sell it. See? It's always something on the earth to sell. Even something, you see, miracle is not happening. The spiritual thing is happening that is producing a physical thing for you to go and sell. Did the people who buy that oil know that it came from a spiritual source? No. No. See, spirit came upon the oil, and the oil kept pouring, kept pouring, kept pouring until there was nothing to pour into anymore. And Elijah said, "Go and sell it, and use that money to pay off the debt of your husband." Can you imagine a woman is going to pay the debt of her husband? Shame on that husband, wherever he is. <laughs> <laughs> shame on him shame on his fat butt and shame on his big manku manku shame on him <laughs> shame on him seed sewing machine that's what some men think they are seed sewing machine <laughs> Because yeah. some men think that when one they give you edibles, when one they give you drug or smoke, give you alcohol, give you a hundred or two hundred dollars, they're entitled to sleep with you. And that's the greatest thing they've done for you. What about buying you a mansion? What about buying you your choicey car? What about sending your children to the best colleges and universities or training? What about that? What about putting a hundred thousand to two hundred to three hundred thousand in your bank account? Are you not entitled to it? Are you not a queen? If you are not a queen, what are you doing with a man? 
Is your, was your body made to be used? Is that what your body was made for? To be used and abused and bandaged? Is that all you're worth? Is that all your children are worth? Tell me. And look at Elijah. Elijah did not come to ask that woman, satisfy me sexually, cook for me, go and bring me a girl or a lady, go and do this for me. No, straight to business. What do you have? I have some little oil in the house. Okay, go and borrow. Go and borrow every bang bang. Go and borrow. Every person. And start pouring. Because the, the, the power of the Holy Ghost is on the little thing that you have. What you think is little is big in the sight of God. God can take any little thing and magnify it. God can take any little thing in your life and make you very, very wealthy. The point is, what is your motive? What is your intention? That is the whole thing that is holding you back. Because some of you, if God give you money right now, give you what you want right now, you go and kill yourself. You'll be arrogant. You'll be careless. You, you, start, you start mocking people. You start telling people, look, I'm smarter than you. You see? I now got what I wanted. And that's why God will not give it to you. See, I'm better than you. I told you that I'm smarter than you. I told you that I can do it better than you. That's why God will not act. Because your intention and motive is wrong. You want the world to understand that, yeah, you, you are the smartest. You, are, you, you, you bring the bacon home. You are the breadwinner. That's not what God is looking for from you. God just wants to help you and make life easy for you. And that's it. It's not to show people, I now have a house. I now have this kind of car. I now am making this kind of money. Look at how I look. That's not what God is looking for. It's not wrong to say those words, but that should not be the primary motivation for what you are doing. But when God sees that that is your primary motivation, you want people to see, God will not act. God is going to allow miracles to flow through physical things. It was a physical oil. It was a physical bread, physical fish, and the miracle came upon it. When physical things come in contact with spiritual realities, boom, multiplication must happen. You can't be the same. The thing will not remain the same. So the little money in your bank account, tell the Holy Spirit to come upon it. Tell the Father to send his Holy Spirit upon it. The gift that you think doesn't mean anything. You are a storyteller. You can do this. You can do that. Have you asked Jesus to send his Holy Spirit upon it and let it become the thing that the miracle will flow through? God is looking for somewhere where his miracle can flow through. Somewhere. Something in you, miracle can pass through and give you an abundant kind of living. And you can live your life quietly. Why? Because you are full of self-esteem. Because what you want, you got. People from like say Iran, Iraq, Bangladesh, India, and most Asian countries, including China, when they are talking to you, they are listening to, to know what kind of profession or job you have. So I was at Luxor 
casino in Las Vegas some time ago. And the people who were behind me were two Indian lawyers from Mumbai. They were trying to check in when I was checking in. So maybe they heard me talking over the phone. I was, I was trying to seal a business deal. So when I finished talking, the older man who owns a very big law firm in Mumbai, he said, sir, can I talk to you? I said, yeah, what's the, thing? what's the matter? He said, I heard what you were saying. So he said, I didn't know that uh, black people could be this rich. I heard how much money you were talking. You were talking in millions. I said, yeah, that's normal for me. <laughs> Do you know that that man was so impressed? He, he, he was saying, wow. He said, I, I, can I have your phone number? A man is asking me for my phone number. A man in his 70s or 80s. He said, you see this young man, I'm training him. He's, he's a lawyer too. He, he's, he's practicing under my firm. We just took, we just traveled from Mumbai to, to Las Vegas to, to, to have a vacation for three days. Then we fly back to India. I said, okay. So I gave him my phone number. He, he was so happy, so excited. He said, when are you coming to India? I, I, will, I will make a way for you to do business and make money so that you can, you can give me. He meant it. He told me the kind of businesses. He began to tell me the kind of businesses that are in India. I'm in contact with him now. He's genuine. I, I, I mean, his law firm is known everywhere in India. Indian people will not have anything to do with you until they know the kind of money you have and the kind of profession you belong to. If not, they will treat you like trash. The same thing with the Chinese. I went into an Asian store to, to buy something. They, they say where they look at people who are, who are either white American or black Americans or Hispanic. They say where they, they look down on those people. Asian people do. They look down on white Americans. They look down on African Americans. I mean, that's why I called uh, white Americans. I call them European Americans. They look down on Hispanic Americans. They do. They do. They mock them that they don't have money, that they are lazy. That's what they say about these three classes of Americans. And you will see the way they treat you when you go into their restaurant or you go into their shops. They won't even pay attention to you. You'll ask them for them to explain because the things are written in, in, in Japanese or in in Chinese or Korean or Vietnamese or whatever, or in, the, or in Hindu or, ta, or Tamil, whatever language, or Gujarati language, all those things. And they won't even pay you any attention. So when I, when I walk in there, Somebody was talking to me over the phone about money. And I was talking. The Chinese lady had the kind of money we were talking over the phone. It's always when they hear me talking about money. She said, sir, sir, can I help you, please? Can I help you? I said, uh, yeah. What are you looking for? I said, I'm looking for this and so. He's, he went and grabbed it and began to interpret from, from, from Chinese to English for me and to make it worse for her I brought out a stack of very clean 100 100 the woman's eyes was big like a rat caught in a trap her eyes was big we're popping out and she look at the money <laughs> yeah while she was while she was checking me out she went and whispered something to the manager and the manager walked in and said yeah yeah sir yeah 
will we'll give you will give you 50 percent discount make sure you always come back to our store we don't want you to go to any store to go and buy make sure you always come here and say yes sir and he gave me 50 percent discount i didn't ask for no discount <laughs> tell me about it let god multiply the little you have the big you have god should multiply it to become bigger the little you have should become big the big you have should become bigger the bigger you have should become biggest i'm talking of in assets and in money and in knowledge understanding and wisdom and in and in human beings that will help you so is that woman who received who received a multiplication of flow of oil is that not a human being like us look at the look at the the, the look at look at the, the the woman of is it seraphat or whatever elijah asks her what do you have the woman said she has a little oil and a little flour and she's getting gathering some firewood to go and cook it and after that she and her son too will die because a lot of people have died because of the famine elijah said prepare first for me go and make bread for me does says the lord see a prophecy of miracle not a prophecy of politics and the woman and her son and elijah did eat throw out the days of the famine the oil did not fall the flour didn't fall it kept coming that's the kind of miracle that i want that god can take god can move me from little wichita to a big place like california and new york so that i can mingle and i can do business i can buy assets with the strong and mighty. Amen. Give God your health. Give him your body. Give him your mind. The most important things to you, give it to him. Don't sit down to be worrying about, I don't have money. I don't have that. I don't have a car. Give God the car you own presently and tell him, to multiply it for the kind of cars you need. You tell him the different kind of cars yeah. that will make you happy when you drive them. We always think that God is against us. He doesn't want us to have good things. Because if we have good things, we become devils. <laughs> so you are trying to get a little bit. I want a situation that I have so many choicey cars. Why? These are things that will make me happy. They are things that I've, I didn't have when I was growing up. I need to have them. So that nobody will say I didn't have it. So that I don't regret coming to this world. I'm, I'm talking to God to multiply this mission house. Because the kind of house that I want to live into. I want to have I want to have a, a snooker, a snooker table, pool tables, whereby I can come drink wine, play, play pool, sit, read a book. I need things that will excite me to do good. I need a swimming pool, indoor and outdoor. I need a hot tub. I need a basketball court for those that play basketball that will come to visit the family. I need a fish pond. To put real real fish in it that we can eat because i follow the tradition of jesus fish and bread i love it i want a movie theater inside my mansion i want a huge library i want a satellite and cable network that is blasting the satellite from space that we own. I want to own things. I want to buy businesses, not just start businesses, but buy them. People, I'm serious. 
I told God, you give this to me or I die. Because there's no use being on the earth if you, if you don't have assets. It's of no use. You are wasting your time. What do you have that God can multiply for you? So that you don't keep making other people sick. You don't keep depending on other people. The woman of Zarephah did not go to depend on other women to feed Elijah and herself and her son. The wife of the prophet, whose husband left her in debt, did not go, did not go to go and start complaining to other people. They went, she went straight to the source. Vivian and I, we are we are doing something on the law of visualization. I've done a bit of it with Mary. But is what we are doing now is we pick one topic, we did it very thoroughly so that we don't get back to it. God gave Jacob wealth through the animals of Laban. What you currently have is what God is going to multiply. Don't, don't let your money just sit on a savings account. Ask God to multiply it or show you the way to multiply the money you have. Where do you apply your knowledge, your understanding, your learning, your degrees, your high school diploma? You need to ask God. You need to give God those things so that he can multiply. There are things that I cannot do, but God can do. Amen. The Holy Communion service mm -hmm. has started. I'm pouring the wine in to the chalice. The bread for the communion this morning comes from Mexico. The altar linen where the chalice and the communion things are is from Ukraine. The altar covering is from New York. Different things that we have here is coming from different countries and from people from different countries. Eternal Father, we give you thanks. We ask that your Holy Spirit will come upon this gift of bread and wine that it will become for us a communion in the body and blood of Jesus, our Messiah. Eternal Father, we offer this gift of bread and wine, which represent Christ in his person among us in a very special way. We stand with him, in him, through him, to offer the one and eternal sacrifice that is himself. We pray, O oh Lord, for his eminence, Apanika, and for our principal clerk, Miraculaja. We pray, O oh Lord, for all of the ministers at the altar, our deacons to be, our priests to be, and bishops to be designated for these things. Lord, we give to you our money, our material resources, our children, our men, our women, our daughters and our boys. 
we give to you our experiences for good. Even the bad ones that you turn them into gold. Mm. Eternal Father, we ask you to bless especially all the single mothers and their children. Protect them from being used and abused by men and by women and by devils. School is about to reopen. We hand over our children into your hands that there will be no accident and death among our young ones. Amen. Eternal Father, we give you our very soul, our very bodies, that they be renewed by your sacrifice, Lord Jesus. Everybody lift up your prayers and make your wishes. Make whatever you want. Whatever you want God to multiply, let him multiply it at this eternal sacrifice. Please tell Jesus to multiply for you. He is the one who multiplied bread and fish. Give him something, including our ministry, including our the anointed united. Give him Idikai Mary. Give him our ministry for him to multiply money and material resources. Please pray. This is time to multiply. all this in the name of Jesus Christ our God our Redeemer and our King who taught us when to pray to say our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Break the bread and eat it and drink the wine of life. The Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. Go and prosper. And remember, you were born to prosper and not to suffer. Goodbye. I will see you on Wednesday at 8 p.m. and Friday at 8 p.m. Bye-bye. This service has come to an Thank end. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful Sunday, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.